The Center for Educational Media and the College of Education at Middle Tennessee State University are proud to offer professional development to K-12 educators in Tennessee through our online video library. These videos are aligned with standards set by the Tennessee Department of Education. For more professional development videos, check out our website at www.mtsu.edu slash CEM. Welcome back, everyone. After a short break, um, we had two great sessions uh, before this with Joseph Winery from Williamson County, Rachel Counts from Lawrence County Schools. Now, our third mini session this afternoon is, is meeting the needs of the whole child with special consideration for English and presented by Luke Dickerson. Luke Dickerson has a uh, been active with the collaborative now for a couple years. He has a lot of experience as an ESL teacher in Murfreesboro City Schools. And so Luke, we're glad you're here today and we're eager to hear what you have to say. Uh, so take it away, Luke. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Laura, for the opportunity to present and putting this on. And I really appreciate the planning committee and the Center for Educational Media and TNT saw helping us get everything together. Um, and it's also just great to be a part of such a wonderful community of uh, ESL teachers. First of all, I'd like to address what does it mean to support the whole child? So this means uh, like some of the whole child tenants are each student enters school uh, healthy and learns about and practices a healthy lifestyle. Each student learns in an environment that is physically and emotionally safe for students and adults. And each student is actively engaged in learning and is connected to the school and broader community. Each student has access to personalized learning and is supported by qualified, caring adults. Uh, and then finally, each student is challenged academically and prepared for success in college and or further study for employment and participation in the global economy. So those are the whole tenants, and they were developed by the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. And it's important to note that um, these are needs that were present for children even before the pandemic started. Um, so it's important to kind of view um, what district supports you already kind of have in place and what is that framework? And then how is your district like self-evaluating um, like some of these supports? And it's also important to note that these tendons um, are kind of dependent on one another. So some of the characteristics of whole child supports, uh, particularly with our framework in our district, is it's culturally responsive wraparound services that support high expectations for all students. So if you see, there's this arrow here that is uh, going along our upside down triangle. Another uh, important characteristic is communication and relationship building is really key. So from various supports and different levels of support, you'll see that communication uh, it is an important part um, throughout the whole entire process. Uh, another important characteristic is that there's ongoing assessments that we use, um, whether they're through uh, district surveys, uh, progress monitoring data that we have um, from the different curriculum supports that we use. Um, these are all things that are very important and they guide our decisions. Um, and it's also important to note that there's a hierarchy to this um, because different students have um, different levels of needs that they may 
uh, have in those various tenants. Um, another thing, uh, just to get back about with the communication, is that multiple modes of communication are used, whether it's language line, letters, emails, flyers. We use Peach Jar, Dojo, Talking Points, Remind, All Calls, um, Facebook, Zoom, Twitter, lots of different things are available. Um, with some of those uh, resources, though, I will caution you, um, each LEA and each school board has policies with social media and stuff, so make sure that you're in compliance with those uh, and that the, those policies are allowing you to have effective communication, too. Uh, I think that that's, that's really important to look at. Um, something that uh, is also a big characteristic of these whole child supports is a lot of it's very dependent on federal, state, and local guidance and policies. So this is kind of an evolving situation. Um, I, I think we're all kind of learning uh, and figuring out how to support each other during this time. So it's important, as we talked about, like the um, flexibility um, to address those things. Uh, something that's kind of interesting, so you can see here is something that was done from the federal government through the CDC about practices like with COVID, and it's in Arabic, and it has the visuals and all this kind of stuff. So this was a good flyer um, that we uh, had. Yes. And there are tons and tons of uh, like online toolkits. Okay, supports for all. This is um, very key. This is kind of like the top of the tier. And if um, things are not done well here, um, you're going to have more and more kids that are going to need uh, increasing supports to look at. So that's important to kind of note. So as you're going through and looking at your plans and how you're supporting um, students, this is a really good place to spend um, a lot of time evaluating and stuff. And I'll say that, um, that this is something we're, we're, we're constantly evaluating and looking at. So access to the core instruction of high uh, quality that's culturally responsive, high interest, differentiated, and aligns to the Genesee standards either in person or online. Um, so... Like with this, it's important to consider when we're going online or doing virtual instruction that we have um, instruction that's uh, synchronistic and asynchronistic. So that means that like asynchronistic, uh, there are opportunities for students to um, have instruction that uh, is at their, on their time frame. Whereas synchronistic would be uh, w like what we're doing today with the group chat and like there's multiple like interactions and stuff and it's it's live. And I think uh, some of the challenges that we've kind of talked about is um, some of the synchronous uh, instruction can be very difficult sometimes with some of the challenges that we have. So we have to put a little bit of extra thought into how our students are going to access those supports. Um, it's also going to be very important that our uh, English learners participate in those state assessments like we talked about this morning uh, and that we have uh, district benchmarks and screens that we can use. This is really going to be very key as we look at our ILP plans and making sure that they're continuing to be data-driven and that we're monitoring them. Um, the next one kind of goes into... RTI 2B, if you've not heard of that, that's the behavior component of the RTI process. Uh, and with that, uh, I would say, make sure that school policies and norms have been appropriately addressed and are modeled for students and families. Um, particularly like with the updates that have happened with the states and the feds and the increased expectations that we're seeing from spring instruction to fall instruction uh, with regards to like attendance and grading. 
uh, it's going to be very um, important that districts think about uh, how they're communicating this information uh, and these expectations to our English learner families. So you may need to think about pictures and videos and norms and hosting um, like uh, online uh, Zoom conferences, like with translators and this community, um, like uh, like members and responses. Uh, we also need to be thinking about uh, professional development still for teachers and those uh, ESL, uh, those teachers, those content teachers that are going to be teaching ESL students and English learners online. Um, another aspect would be fidelity of instruction and fidelity monitoring. Like, uh, is what we're doing effective? How are we evaluating our plans and how instruction's going? And so we have our team guidance documents that are online, a lot of state resources there. NEAT has also put out a lot of plans uh, and an updated guidance for what virtual instruction looks like and some good practices there. So I would highly encourage you to uh, look at those websites. And it's also important to note too that um, our ESL students, um, they had different experiences with virtual learning last spring. So that's going to be important to note um, how students interacted with what we've already done. Now, the supports that are specific um, for English learners, let's look at this. So um, this is something that all English learners should still be um, receiving, like completion of these monitoring forms, uh, our meetings, there's some sort of interaction with the content and uh, language uh, teachers were working together, notes and recommendations from ESL teachers. Uh, in my district, we have elevation strategies, recommendations that we can give based on monitoring and based on the student's language profile, um, acculturation strategies for making sure that um, we have a culturally, we have culturally responsive practices. Um, the individualized learning plan uh, with, still with uh, accommodations with those goals that we talked about that's aligned to WIDA and content standards uh, and the progress monitoring that we're doing. Now, as we go down the triangle, like we're going to be still discussing the needs of students through like RTI. Uh, my district's gotten some grants for after school tutoring to help close some of those gaps that some students may have. Uh, and it's important to notify parents and communicate with them and get permission uh, for uh, some of these additional services and um, uh, things like tutoring or, or RTI. Okay, so the next one, uh, if you remember, we talked about um, spending a lot of time in tier one and making sure that that's done appropriately. I, I'll say uh, when we're looking at some of these more intensive interventions, that's a very important place to look at. And there's some things that you really need to be very specific um, with addressing as we work with our English learners. Um, so it, as I said uh, previously, it's very important in tier one that we've taught and modeled and we've practiced and discussed uh, like what our norms are going to be like, whether we're in school virtually or in person, uh, and that we're also meeting the social and emotional needs of students. Uh, and we have to consider that um, COVID and a lot of the changes that have happened have affected students differently um, and that uh, there's going to be students that uh, they've, well, there were students that have had various levels of trauma before this happened, but there's even going to be even potentially greater discrepancies to look for because COVID has impacted families and communities a little bit differently. So it's important that that has been addressed. And it's important that um, those cultural considerations have happened and that there's plans and protocols that are responsive to that. 
um, at the very onset. And it's important to note too, from a cultural perspective, that um, behaviors and protocols are very different from school to school, district to district, state to state, and even country to country. Uh, we have a lot of students coming from very diverse backgrounds with diverse experiences. So that's very important um, to recognize when we're looking at behaviors. Um, so I would caution also um, to see how, how long has a student been? How do these behaviors compare to other like English learners? Um, and uh, how long has the student gone into the country? And then also, does the student have um, the language to access any of these interventions? Um, but it's very important um, if they don't, uh, and the need is great, that we're still um, providing some sort of supports for behaviors and intervention. Uh, and uh, in our district, we have behavior support specialists, and they're an important part of our team to work with and to have those discussions. So there's lots of key players here. So these are discussions that I would highly recommend you have uh, among your district. The same goes with academic interventions. So um, we have academic interventions in our school district. So you need to consider the progress that the English learners have made in regards to their peers. And we also have to consider lack of instruction during this period. Like, were they interacting with the online um, instruction? How did they do? These are all things to consider. And it may be more appropriate to try to do like after school tutoring or something like that to, to figure out. Uh, and it, a lot of this will be dependent on um, the, the student's profile and what's appropriate. Make sure you're considering the student's oral language when you're looking at interventions to make sure that they can understand the, the directions uh, and they can interact with the actual um, the, um, the oral instructions and things like that. Another thing to consider, don't forget about our high achieving uh, English learners. And I highly recommend districts consider um, like approaching and looking at like universal screening for potential gifted students uh, and referrals and not leaving out the English learners and working with your cohort of uh, ESL teachers and seeing what they're observing and things. Uh, and as we've identified students in our district, we have a program, a Scholars Enrichment Program, that provides additional support for those students that um, that need those extra challenges and, and supports to be successful because it, it is very different. Um, you can see uh, my district was very fortunate. We had Gifted Academy before the um, pandemic started. So uh, a lot of my teachers in the districts have our gift certificate to work. So this is something that we're aware of. Now, uh, probably one of the biggest needs that we're constantly looking at and talking about trying to address is, is there a plan in place for addressing things like school supplies, personal protective equipment, healthcare access, hygiene, food, uh, particularly since like the CDC has recommended that um, we have individual supplies and not communal supplies and things like that. So our, our community partners are very important um, to making sure that we're um, consulting with families to meet their basic needs. So with the financial and emotional strain uh, increasing for a lot of families, we know that more families are needing these supports than we've typically seen. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, many of our immigrant families did not get stimulus funds. So that, that money was not distributed um, consistently in our immigrant community. So that's something to be aware of. Um, formal community specific supports, um, 
this goes on more with like a legal um, aspect. So it's important to address that uh, COVID has affected uh, the, our, our court system. And it's also important to be on the lookout for increases in child abuse because we know that when there are increased emotional and financial strains, that the likelihood of child abuse gets up. Some of the things when we're talking about uh, meeting basic needs, these are some of the district resources that we've had. Uh, so here in the uh, top right hand corner, you'll see President Nick Fee and Dr. Linda Gilbert in front of our chow bus, uh, which we have a feeding program where, where we provide breakfast and lunch uh, at 40 different locations in our county uh, using our buses. Uh, and during the pandemic, we actually ran out of milk uh, for one time, and it was kind of a challenge to figure out how are we going to get milk for our students. Uh, and MDSU's dairy came to our aid, and they provided milk. And our child bus in Rutherford County at our locations is available for feeding anybody that is 18 years of age or less. Um, and with that, we have tied in the health initiatives with healthy eating with our farm to school where we've grown some of the local produce uh, and we're also still providing uh, our bob which is books on a bus uh, which we provide uh, access to books during instruction something that's also been key is in the lower right corner you'll see our free little library so each of our schools has a little compartment with books and snacks and food. And this is very important too because this is there 24 seven. We look at it, it's made sure that uh, our school board members work to make sure that uh, one of these is, is, is filled at, in, at a school and that they're sanitized uh, on a regular basis. But it's very important, food insecurity is a, has been a big issue, uh, I'll say. On top of that, uh, at offering family engagement sessions still, a lot of this is really new. So sometimes families feel disconnected. So offering opportunities to connect like we're doing today and talk about common issues that we're seeing is very important. Uh, and so this was a family engagement session. It was done in English, but it was about behavior uh, and some of the behaviors that parents may be seeing when kids haven't been in school for a while and there's norms. So that was very important. That was something that um, some schools uh, were even able to offer in Spanish or in Arabic with our family liaison. So it's very important that um, we try to work with our community partners to provide those sorts of supports for our families. Oh, Luke, I'm going to step in here. Okay, and that's the yeah, We've got a couple minutes now in Q&A. Uh, we don't, there's not a lot of questions, but there are some comments who are uh, report, uh, addressing some areas of agreement. One is uh, there were comments on the tutoring and yeah. it was uh, well, uh, lots of agreement on that using ASAS or using LEAP. Um, Glad to hear the districts using wraparound services. So that was that, that was a good one. And also uh, starting where they are, starting with their native language. And yes. so that's uh, a lot of agreement on that. And uh, and we continue to have a side conversation going, everyone. Uh, lots of information here on translation apps. So take a look at the chat. So uh, Luke, I want to. Thank you for this presentation. Lots of good ideas from Murfreesboro City Schools on serving the whole child. So thank you for being with us today, Luke. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Mm -hmm.